Member for Shuswap. Well, uh, thank you very much, Honourable Speaker. Now, the importance of British Columbia's construction and skilled trades uh, sector cannot be understated. The critical work undertaken by workers, employers, and all their stakeholders builds the critical infrastructure, the hospitals, the schools, and homes that people in BC so desperately need. I thank all members of this House, and I hope that they all understand and would agree that it's in the best interest of all British Columbians for government to listen to those in the construction and skilled trade sectors and to find innovative ways to make it easier, not harder, to fill our skilled labour gaps. More carrot, less stick. I rise today, Honourable Speaker, to remind my colleagues here that this is not the case currently. Beginning December 1st of 2023, Phase 1 of the government's Compulsory Trades Program, or Skilled Trade Certification, kicks in. Phase 1 includes a variety of regulations imposed on employers and employees in the construction and skilled trade sectors, including introducing a prescribed supervisor ratio of two apprentices per one journeyman for the following 10 trades. Construction electrician, industrial electrician, power line technician, refrigeration and air conditioning mechanic, gas fitter A and B, steam fitter, pipe fitter, heavy duty equipment technician, sheet metal worker, automotive cervix technician, and auto body and collision technician. Now, Honourable Speaker, I'm troubled that along with many in the industry about the program's impact on the availability of tradespeople in BC. The policy, which sets new conditions and regulations, is going to have a negative and unintended consequence on industries that are vital to our economy and society. Those aspiring to work in the trades from rural and smaller communities may have to leave their communities to access training seats or apprenticeships, if they're indeed even available, Honourable Speaker. I'm hearing from constituents in Salmon Arm and contractors from around the province that are raising alarm bells as there appear not to be enough journey persons in the province to meet the requirements for the government's new ratio. For example, I spoke to a contractor only a few weeks ago who told me that should the compulsory trades program legislation kick in today, you'd have to lay off five people in order to satisfy the two to one trades training ratio. Stated, uh, there simply are not enough journey persons in the province available for him to be able to meet the two to one ratio. So the reality is that although this is intended to increase and provide additional opportunities for trades training in the pro province, which is definitely an admirable, admirable effort and something that uh, we would support, the challenge is by bringing in the requirement of the two to one trades training ratio without having enough journey persons available, it will likely result in apprentices having to be laid off because a company can no longer meet that ratio requirement. Now, the highlights, uh, this highlights the lack of planning and foresight on the part of government. Now, let me remind members and British Columbians uh, that we have, have not seen a plan to increase the number of trades training seats in BC. These new regulations set restrictions on our industry without a proper plan on how to mitigate the side effects and consequences. We saw this with the recent strata legislation that only led to even more people being kicked out of their homes as a result of the lack of consultation to listen to those impacted by the legislation. This was also the case with Bill 36, where we now see hundreds of doctors, nurses and others in the healthcare sector speak up about the negative impact of last minute legislation. Honourable Speaker, the list goes on, but the point that I'm trying to make is that this trend needs to stop. We need more time to properly scrutinize and debate important legislation so that we can actually fix problems instead of making them worse. It's unbelievable that during a time we're facing a housing supply crisis, the very people who have the skills to build those homes are facing yet more red tape and barriers. This could impact worker availability, which would also potentially create further issues for a government that already struggles to deliver projects on time and on budget. There's already a massive backlog in the sector as we face a shortage of electricians and of heating, air conditioning uh, tradespersons, where we have projects that are put on hold until there's people available. Instead of addressing the lack of seats and supports for tradespeople, more layers of red tape have been added. Making matters worse, businesses are now hearing from newly hired enforcement officers who are leaving businesses scrambling at the last minute as they're facing either layoffs, cost overruns, or closures 
when this compulsory trades program kicks in. I have heard from forestry and mining sectors uh, who are deeply concerned about how this could potentially impact their business, their ability to keep going at a time when labour is increasingly difficult to find and the cost of goods is increasing. More bureaucratic red tape is only making things worse. And with this sector, specifically the heavy duty equipment technician program uh, for the mandatory certification is what's going to negatively impact those two specific industries. Now, while there have been pressures put on the skilled trade sector, the government has not made it clear what it is doing to ease the burden or what kind of support it will offer. The last minute budget made no mention of what the plan is to meet demand or make available all the journeymen and tradespeople needed to meet these requirements. Honourable Speaker, the introduction of the mandatory skills trades program later this year is going to have negative unintended consequences on industries that need more support and resources and less red tape. These new changes require more resources, such as more journeymen, than we have currently available in our province. Businesses, workers, and my colleagues on this side of the House are all wondering what is government's plan to ensure that construction and skilled trade sector will not face layoffs, shutdowns or cost overruns as a result of the legislation that they are now raising the alarm bells about. Honourable Speaker, uh, in speaking to a number of trades training uh, colleges around the province, they've indicated that there's inadequate funding, that in many cases the trades training programs uh, are a loss, uh, actually cost additional dollars, and they're having to subsidize it through other operations. Uh, it appears that if we want to encourage colleges to increase the number of trades training seats, funding needs to be increased, uh, especially for the trades training sector. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Thank you, Member.